But well, let's talk, uh, uh, let's uh, chat a little bit after the break to the markets. Uh, mm -hmm. And this is where uh, we're looking at your uh, revised outlook on the equities market, at least, for the beer case, the, uh, the bull case, and the best case. Uh, it looks like the numbers have changed. Yes. Things have changed. Things have changed. Yes. Uh, things always change at <laughs> uh, the market, isn't it? Numbers always change. Well, in, light, in light of the, the, the way the half year has gone. The first half. Yeah, we, we saw that investors came into 2018 excited about the momentum and the market returns of 2017, where Nigeria was the best performing market in all of the frontier markets. And I think the third best performing market overall in the whole world. So you saw the market ride up to 17.9% during January alone, with some of the you know, uh, tiny companies, um, the tier two banks going up 100% within a month. Now, having gone through that euphoria, what we've then seen is the market has entered the year with some expectation that there'll be more fundamental things to drive it. But as soon as people began to see there was really nothing, it's all technical issues and oh people my. taking, oh taking advantage, oh the market has given up all its gains. And plus what I explained earlier in terms of what's happening outside of Nigeria and the developed markets. What should I take? A base case, a bull case, or a beer case? But, but, but I'm, I'm, I'm worried about you. Where do you get a bull case, guys, of 18.3%? Well, if... As a consequence of planning for 2019 return, the government does something quite daring and brave and begins to tinker with the fundamentals of the economy. You could see a reversal of capital market capital flows into the country, and that would be sufficient to drive the, the market. On that side, we are looking at a bull case of 18% thereabout, which is consistent with our original projection for the year. You know, but our probability waiting on that is only 20%. Uh, we are looking now that a more realistic case, our base case, would be about two, about ten percent. But on the downside issue, if there is, if things continue as they are, we expect the market to end up relatively flat, say about two point two percent. That would be our bear case in that in that regard. You know, I think that the issues happening in the developed markets continue to weigh in on Nigeria. I think that our lack of uh, sort of uh, a decided decisive approach in tackling uh, you know, in-depth you know, in problems is also one of the issues. And of course, when you add other things like the insecurity in the con country, the, the, you know, the way that democratic institutions are being harassed, all of those things contribute to the comp confusion and complication you know, for the market. Yeah. Uh, what's your outlook on the debt market? Uh, the debt market has actually performed you know, reasonably, reasonably well. The country, you know, as you see from the budget last year, the, the government is, that's really one aspect of the budget that go government maintains is um, projections. They did about 1.8 trillion uh, planned uh, borrowing last year, uh, debt service, and this year they're looking at 2 trillion. Uh, that has, because you have such continuous uh, activity in the debt market, you would expect that the debt market would, would be supportive to investors. So we expect that to do well. Uh, for investors. We've got to wrap up this conversation. You've got about a minute, and I got one of our viewers mm -hmm. uh, uh, putting this uh, comment uh, okay. on your earlier uh, conversation about deregulation. Yes. Uh, and, and it says, uh, Ipemosa says, uh, that's on Twitter, uh, it says, uh, deregulation is not a viable uh, prescription for an index product in Nigeria, which is petrol. Mm -hmm. So we've, we've, we've banded deregulation for the last 5, 10, 20, 30 years. Mm -hmm. We haven't resolved it. You believe regulation is the way to go? I think that it is the, the place to go because you, if you really look at what is happening, you know, today they suggest that we, we use 60 million liters of petrol a day. I don't think that we actually do use that. So when we are not deregulating, we're effectively subsidizing our neighbors or passing money on to some people, but clearly it is not coming to us. I'd rather, for, as a government, subsidize production and to subsidize consumption. That is really the core. And if you think of electricity, it's more efficient for the government to go deregulate, go to a cost-reflective tariff, which will solve the power problem, and then bring, use the subsidy money to subsidize electricity, because you can actually more easily target the places where you want to subsidize, rural areas, you know, medical facilities, educational facilities. And it's easier to measure it than this unknown space of trying to deregulate of, of, of jerry cans of, 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 of and petrol frankly and it's the wealthy people that use petrol it's not really the poor people 
you know, you know, it's the rich people in Lagos, Abuja, and Port Harcourt that have multiple cars that consume the petrol. Multiple generators. Yeah, well, Big actually, one. diesel is not is not subsidized. <laughs> That's the issue. So, we really have to face. So maybe the... we just need to do a bit of a, of a science test here to find out who uses most of this petrol and diesel, and find out if that comes to me, uh, because the uh, the barber shop and uh, they just use about four liters for a day or no, two. No, even even you don't have to do a census. If you go outside of Lagos, Abuja, and Port Port Harcourt. The price of PMS is, you know, close to 200 naira. It's not uh, 145 like it is here. Interesting. You know, so the rest of the people are carrying the burden. It's, it's the elite that are enjoying it. Uh, okay, let's have this conversation <laughs> some other time. Let's yeah. check together in a few more time, a few months down the line, before the end of the year once again, and find out if the candle uh, hasn't been blown out by the wind. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you, everyone, for watching. Goodbye from Lagos.